Well, what a season that was, and now it's time for the playoffs. What's up, guys? It's me, Alan. I'm back with another video, and today, uh, we got a double feature on this video, so to speak. I'm going to be looking at my preseason predictions and kind of just going over what my thoughts were at the time and looking at how the season played out because I took some fucking L's this year. And then later in the video, we will get to my playoff predictions for this season, um, which I think would be pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead. Let's jump into this. So please make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll probably have a timestamp put down in the description below uh, for when you want to get to the predictions. If you don't want to hear me talk about, you know, my preseason predictions, um, but with that said, let's go ahead. Let's jump into this. So, yeah, I took some L's this year. Um, my original predict, my preseason predictions had me taking the Bills, Browns, Titans, and Chiefs to win their divisions. With the Colts, Chargers, and Broncos all managing to get into the playoffs. The Br the Bills and Browns both going thirteen and four. The Titans going eleven and six. The Chiefs going fourteen and three. The Colts going ten and seven, the Chargers eleven and six, and the Broncos ten and seven. I'll be honest with you, the only teams whose records I predicted correctly this year were the Giants going fourteen and three, or uh, the Giants going four and thirteen. They wish they could go fourteen and three, um, and the Dolphins going nine and eight. That's all I got right. Everything else was most of the other ones were like a win off or a loss off. And then there was just some massive L's. So, I'll, yeah, take that for what you will. Um, on the NFC side, I had the Cowboys going 12-5, and five, the Packers 14-3, the, the Buccaneers at 15-2, and two, and the 49ers at 12-5 and five to win the divisions, with the football team going 11-6, and six, the Vikings going 10-7, and seven, and the Rams going 11-6 and six to make the playoffs. Again, L's. Um, so I'm just going to go through the notes that I wrote down for each team and kind of just look at where I think things went wrong. Um, because obviously, as we know, the playoffs turned out to be the Bills 11 and six, the Bengals 10 and seven, the Titans 12 and, 12 and five, the Chiefs 12 and five, the Patriots 10 and seven, the Steelers nine, seven and one, and the Raiders at 10 and seven, all getting in on the AFC side with the Cowboys 12 and five, the Packers 13 and four, the Buccaneers 13 and four, the Rams 12 and five, the Eagles nine and eight, the Cardinals eleven and six, and the 49ers at ten and seven getting in on the NFC side. Wild. Let me take a drink. Ah, ice teeth. Ow. Think I might went that think I might have went down the wrong tube there. Anyway, moving on. So just looking at my notes, and we're going to start with the bad teams first and kind of work our way up um, based on what I predicted. The Lions, I knew you'd be bad. I didn't think you'd be this bad. Uh, losing every game for majority of the season. You, you couldn't even beat the Steelers. You tied with them somehow. And then you finally got your win over the Vikings. And what ended up helping to get... Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman kicked out of my out of Minnesota, so there you go. And you managed to pull a win out of your ass against the Cardinals, and then you beat the Packers in Week 18. So I'll give you credit where credit's due, and I am excited to see what Dan Campbell is going to do moving forward. I think you have your guy, excuse me, at the head coaching position. Jared Goff's not your guy when it comes to quarterback, but. He's serviceable right now, and if you can get somebody in the draft, we'll see what happens. Um, you have two first-round picks this year, thanks to the Rams. Um, so, yeah, we shall see. Uh, the Jets, yeah, you are ass, and you need to get your shit together. Uh, you have to hope that, you better hope Zach Wilson pans out, or else it's going to be time for another quarterback in a couple years. Sorry, Zach. Uh, Jaguars... Urban Meyer. That's all that needs to be said. The Bengals. All right. I will graciously take my L. 
I really thought this team was going to suck this year. Granted, I don't think anybody would have expected the Bengals to pull a division championship out of their ass. Um, considering the, some of the other, you know, two of the other teams in that division, and we'll get to one of them later, uh, the one that you're not thinking of. But um, in all honesty, I figured, you know, them. I have nothing against Jamar Chase, and looking at what he did in his rookie year, he balled the fuck out. Him and Burrow reigniting that connection from their college days, he balled the fuck out. But I still wish they would have taken Sewell. And I only say that because Burrow, he has been getting lit up this season. He's had a couple of injury scares uh, this year. Nothing nearly as bad as last year. But a couple of injury scares, including their division clinching win over the Chiefs, where at the very end, um, luckily all they needed was a field goal, and they were in the position to get one, so they were able to take him out. But he still tweaked himself a little bit. So, um, yeah, they need to address the offensive line in this upcoming offseason. However, I will give credit where credit's due. You pull the division championship out of your ass. You might have saved Zach Taylor's job because a lot of people thought, how the fuck was he not fired after last season? And we figured that if you guys had another bad year this season, he would probably be gone. Now, whether it's because of him or in spite of him, you've gotten him to the playoffs. You've gotten your team back to the playoffs. And you look a lot better in this season than you did a lot of times under the Marvin Lewis era. I really think you guys might get your first playoff win in a while. We'll come back to that later, but I think you will. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Texans. You managed to get four wins. I actually said that your, that your ceiling would probably be three or four wins. I only had you getting one, and the one that I predicted you to, game that I predicted you to win, you didn't even win in real life, which is kind of funny to me. Um, I have to be honest though, Davis Mills, he's not going to win rookie of the year, obviously, but he did better than I thought he would. And granted you had Tyrod Taylor to start the season and then he got hurt. Why does this keep happening to Tyrod Taylor? What the, who the fuck did he piss off for this to keep happening to him? Every time a team Every time he signs with a team that ends up getting a rook, uh, a young rookie QB, QB on their roster. This happened in Cleveland. This happened in Los Angeles with the Chargers. I'm pretty sure... Oh, this happened in Buffalo, technically. I mean, Peterman didn't pan out, but that's technically where it started. Um, And now it's happening in Houston with Davis Mills. Um, You know, we looked at you guys as being a tire fire, and you were... Uh, you still have Deshaun Watson on your roster, even though you didn't play him at all this year. Um, that's a situation that's got to get resolved at some point, both on the field and off the field. Um, and they're saying that they're going to try and trade him this offseason, so we'll see. Um, but you got four wins this year. You did better than I think a lot of people thought you would. And maybe there's a little bit of hope for you. Maybe. Um, the Giants. When I made my prediction video, I, even though I had them going 4-13, and 13, I said that out of all the teams that I didn't have, that I had not coming close to making the playoffs, the one that had the, maybe the best chance to maybe make a run, depending on how things panned out, would have been the Giants if Daniel Jones got his shit together if their new additions got, you know, worked out and all that stuff. Well, you can tell I was being delusional because I should have picked the Bengals. Uh, the Giants were ass again. Somehow they're keeping Joe Judge and Dave Gettleman decided to retire. Um, I don't understand keeping Judge, but okay. Just, what do you do? You need offensive line. You need help pretty much everywhere, and um, I don't see one of these potential one of these quarterbacks that could potentially be on the move uh, this off season coming to you. 
So you're probably stuck with Daniel Jones for another year. Also, how the hell did Kadarius Tony and Kenny Galladay not catch a single touchdown this year? What the fuck? Um, I underrated the Panthers a little bit as well. They were another team that I didn't have coming close to making the playoffs. And in the end, they didn't. But for a time, it looked like they could. Um, the thing with Darnold is that he started out well, and ev and then the wheels just fell off. And then you brought Cam Newton back, and then that didn't do anything for you. Uh, Newton, I wouldn't be surprised if he retires. It, his time is up, unfortunately. The injuries have gotten to him. They've become too much. Um, Darnold is probably not the guy, and I feel bad because he's been fucked up in New York. But at the same time, when he came out of USC, you know, when he was drafted... He got a little, inter he got a little, you know, turnover prone. So, what do you do there? The Patriots. They're my favorite team, and I underrated the fuck out of them. They looked a lot better than I thought they'd be. <sighs> Looking back, I find it funny how I said that they would make the playoffs if they kept Cam and wouldn't because they released him and that they were going with the rookie. Nothing against Mac Jones. He, he's probably the only guy that can challenge Jamar Chase in the Rookie of the Year race, at least for the Offensive Rookie of the Year award, because, like, Jamar Chase was lights out, but Mac played really fucking, really fucking good this year, and, you know, it is what it is. I figured it would be, it would be a learning experience year, and he'd get close to 500, but wouldn't get there, um, and he managed to get this team into the playoffs. Hell, we damn near fucking won the division, if not for the fact that we lost a couple of games late in the season. Like, if a couple of these games go our way, I'm looking at the Colts game specifically. We're the division champions. But, we're in the playoffs, and that's what matters. And, we get a rematch, Redux, against the Bills, round three. That should be fun. Um, but... Yeah, we're still here, bitches. <laughs> um, Raiders and Steelers, these kind of go hand in hand here. Um, the Raiders, they, I said they'd be inconsistent. That would still be a thing for them. And it was. The only thing that was consistent about them was having to deal with off the field shit between the Henry Ruggs thing, the Damon Arnett thing, the Nate Hobbs thing recently, John Gruden. Um, yeah, there was a lot going on. And then to top all of that off, you had the late season passing of John Madden. Um, but at that time, you had two games left, the Colts and the Chargers. All you had to do was win both, have a little bit of help, and you could get in to the playoffs. And you did. So after everything that's happened this year, you're here. So um, props to you guys for sticking it out this long. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I have a prediction, but we'll get to that. Um, but congrats. Congrats to getting here, and rest in peace, John. Uh, for the Steelers, I, I thought they'd be okay. I thought, you know, you know, okay to about as ass as you could be for that team, can, all things considered. Um, and somehow, they're in the playoffs again. Somehow, Mike Tomlin has yet to have a losing season as a head coach in this league with the Steelers, which is the only team he's head coach, but whatever. Um... And somehow Big Ben's last ride is not going to end in the regular season or on the couch, assuming that the Chargers and Raiders tied last night, which they didn't. Uh, it's going to probably end in a loss to the Chiefs, but we'll come back to that. Um, but that said, what a year it's been for them between having games where they just straight up sucked, uh, losing Juju to injury, uh, the Chase Claypool drama, again uh from the vikings game i believe uh the bears game where the bears got fucked over by ref ball and we could all tell i mean even some steelers fans hated it um 
the tie with the Lions. Like, what the fuck has it been with you guys in the NFC North? <laughs> like, the only clean game that you probably had was against the Packers, of course. Um, but you fucked your way into a playoff spot. And JJ, or excuse me, TJ Watt tied Michael Strahan's rec uh, record for sacks in a single season after looking like he might sit out early in the year due to um you know due to contract issues and he still ended up missing two games anyway because of the because of injury and yet he still did it so congrats uh the bears i overrated the fuck out of you and i think it's just because of the fact that i thought andy dalton would do better than you would uh or that he did um and that justin fields would look better than he did um, so all I'll say is this, thank God Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy are out. Good fucking bye. Cardinals. Underrated the hell out of you. And I, honestly, because I did not, I figured you'd be good. I did not expect you guys to be the last undefeated team in the league for the majority of the season and do what you did. Now, granted... You lost a bunch of games after that undefeated streak ended to the hands of the Packers, but you still pulled it off. And, um, you know, even despite being in a cutthroat NFC West division. So, I gotta give you the respect you deserve, guys. Like, holy shit. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen in the playoffs, but I really wish Larry Fitzgerald was still on this team. Because if you guys manage to make a run, oh man. Like that, like if the Cardinals somehow make a run and Fitzgerald is not a part of this team after, you know, he, he hasn't really retired, but he chose not to come back after his contract expired last season. Like that would just kind of suck, you know? Um, but anyway, congrats to the Cardinals. Uh, the Eagles, I think I underrated you guys a little bit and I, I said back in my predictions that uh, Jalen Hurts would play with a chip on his shoulder, and that he would try to go out. He would go out and prove a lot of people wrong. Uh, the way it was looking, it was looking like Nick Sirianni might not have lasted past this year. Um, you know, with them not using Miles Sanders enough, and some of the other play calling decisions, um, and having to get out of an NFC, you know that had, or out of a division that got Dak Prescott back healthy and had a Washington football team defense that should have been better than it was. We'll get back to that. Um, but you made it. So congrats. You're probably going to get your asses kicked in the playoffs, but you made it here. Congrats. The Falcons, they finished about as well as I thought they would. Uh, they didn't choke nearly as much as they did last year, but you were still mid um, I'm again. I managed to correctly predict the Dolphins going nine and eight, though I didn't have them going one and seven to start the season. What the fuck? And now Brian Flores is out as your head coach. Really? Now allegedly, the relation relationship between him and Tua and the owner deteriorated, but that's that can be something that can get fixed. And Flores was probably the best coach you've had in a while. You're going to regret firing him. Wherever he goes, you're going to regret firing him. Uh, I'm going to laugh if he ends up going to Denver. They somehow get either Wilson or Rodgers or somebody else. Um, because like, cause what people have said with the Broncos, and we'll get back to them in a moment, is if they get the right head coach, that team could go places. We'll see. Uh, the Ravens, call me Nostradamus. I managed to predict them not making the playoffs. Granted, now, and I, I think the biggest reason for that was because of the, the injury issues that they were suffering from before the season even started. I thought that would be a bad omen for them, and it was. They still, now, to be fair... They did still almost make the playoffs, and they still and had the Chiefs beaten the Bengals, the Ravens would have still been in play to potentially win the division. 
and then the Steelers beat them in week 18. And also, Lamar Jackson was out the last few weeks. So, yeah. Um, get healthy, because you need to. Um, I had a question in my uh, predictions video uh, what the bigger hot take was. The Saints making the playoffs or Seattle or the the Saints yeah, the Saints um winning eight games or Seattle missing the playoffs. Neither was really much of a hot take because they both failed to make it. Um The Saints still almost made it though, and if the 49ers managed to lose, they would have been in, despite the fact that Jameis Winston's out. Um so I'll give the Saints props for that. Uh they didn't fall off nearly as bad as I think a lot of people thought they would. Um, as for Seattle, they are falling apart. This team needs to go into rebuild mode. Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson, this is probably their last year with the team, at least for one of them. Wilson's going to want out. I don't know if Carroll's going to want to stick around with a rebuilding team. Uh, Rashad Penny, I think, is a free agent this year, and he's probably going to go get paid. Um, I don't know what you do with guys like DK Metcalf and Jamal Adams. The Jamal Adams trade in hindsight is looking kind of bad now because the Jets now have two first-round picks, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what Seattle does at this point. Um, now we get to the teams that I actually did have making the playoffs in the pre uh, ahead of the season, and um, yeah. <laughs> Some of them there's not a lot to talk about, so we'll be getting to the playoff predictions pretty soon. Uh, but for some, there is. Uh, the Colts. You probably should be in the playoffs right now. Not the Steelers, but you. And yet, you failed to make it. Y you failed to make the playoffs. Even despite the crazy season that Jonathan Taylor had. Um, just, what the fuck, guys? What the fuck? Carson Wentz is not your guy. Yes, you managed to pull wins out of your ass against teams like New England and Arizona down the stretch. But you got embarrassed by the Jaguars. A team that you have not beaten in Jacksonville since 2014. A Jaguars team that had to deal with Urban Meyer this year. That fucking sucked. And who might have already ruined Trevor Lawrence. So, how? Fucking how? You're still a quarterback away from being a top tier team. Get it together. Denver? You had to deal with a bunch of things this year. Bridgewater getting hurt every so often. Having to deal with Drew Locke again. Injuries. Trading Von Miller. COVID. All that shit. And you probably overachieved anyway. I had you making the playoffs, but flip the record I predicted you with. And that's what you finished with. Still, you're a head coach away, and maybe a few other pieces away, from being a a sleeper team i think and um you know now that brian flores is available maybe go get him who knows uh the vikings you almost got in and then you didn't um zimmer and spielman are gone now so i'm interested to see what they decide to do with kirk cousins and what they and uh the rest of that roster but minnesota we'll see all right now I get to two of my biggest L's in predictions. This is probably the biggest L that I took. How the fuck did I have the football team going to the NFC Championship game before this season? Now, I'll mind you, I figured they would succeed a lot off the backs of their defense. And, um, yeah, where was it? Fitzpatrick got hurt. And then you lost Chase Young at some point during the season. And it was like your defense really never showed up the way that it did the year before. Taylor Heineke is not the long-term option. You need to get somebody in there. Um, he, he's a backup option at best. And Dan Snyder can fuck off. And FedEx Field needs to be fucking redone. And I don't think he'll do that. So fuck you, Dan Snyder. Uh, like the football team, I had the Browns going deep. I had them going all the way to the fucking Super Bowl after what we saw last year. Well, that didn't happen. Injuries, injuries, COVID, more injuries, more COVID. And now the question is, what do you do with Baker Mayfield? Now, right for right now, he's staying put. He's going to be their quarterback going into next season. I have no doubt that 
Mayfield can be a great quarterback. Stefanski can be a great head coach, and he has looked as such. But how much do you trust Baker Mayfield, even when he's healthy? Because he played a lot of this season hurt. But how can you trust him to be healthy? Or when he's healthy? That's the question. Um, The Chargers, well, you all saw last night's game. You all saw what they've done this season. They can be a great team. Brandon Staley needs to stop going for it on fourth down all the fucking time. I'll leave it at that. The Rams, I underrated you guys. And I overrated the 49ers. Now, you both made the playoffs. But I thought we'd see a little bit more of Detroit Stafford in L.A. Luckily, it was not as bad, even though he did get a little INT happy late in the year. Almost cost his team some games. Um, but they were better than I thought they would. And if everybody is clicking, if everybody is healthy and clicking, that team could be dangerous. Um, and then for the 49ers, I overrated you guys. Uh, yeah, you made the playoffs, but you had to sneak your way in there. You had to you know, hope that the Saints wouldn't win or that you would win. Um, and with Jimmy G being hurt and Lance being a rookie, yeah, you're about to get your asses kicked. Um, and then for the remaining teams, Tennessee, Buffalo, Dallas, um, Green Bay, Kansas City, and Tampa, for the most part, par for the course. Buffalo underachieved a bit. They weren't as good as they were last year. I wish Derrick Henry didn't get hurt during the season because the Titans would have a far more dominant record. Um... And Henry would probably have over over 2,000, probably even over 25,000 rushing yards the way that he was going. Because he's still top 10 in rushing yards at just under 1,000, despite the fact that he's missed most of the season. And you got him back for the playoffs, and you have an extra week to rest him. Thank fucking God. Um, Dallas is back to, being, went to winning the division despite McCarthy. Um... Green Bay, despite all the Aaron Rodgers distractions, you guys are somehow at the top again. Kansas City got off to a shitty start and then dominated their way the rest of the year. And then Tampa's looking to defend their Super Bowl title. But you need to figure out your defense because that defense has looked ass at points in time, especially late in the season. And we don't need to be talking about the A-B thing. Okay. Now we can get to the playoff predictions. So... We're about almost 28 minutes into this video. So around here, um, if you decided to skip ahead to the predictions, welcome. If you've watched everything up to this point, thank you. Now, let's get to the predictions, shall we? So, for the AFC, we have the two-seeded Chiefs against the seventh-seeded Steelers, the third-seed Bills against the sixth-seed Patriots, and the fourth-seed Bengals against the fifth-seed Raiders. On the NFC side, we have the two-seeded Buccaneers against the seven-seeded Eagles. Excuse me. The third-seeded Cowboys against the sixth-seeded 49ers and the fourth-seeded Rams against the five-seed Cardinals. On the AFC side, the Chiefs, this is the easiest game to pick. They are going to fucking destroy the Steelers again. They beat them. They beat their asses a couple weeks ago, by the way. So there's that. Uh, Big Ben will retire, and you'll go into the Steelers will go into the offseason looking for their next QB because I don't think they have one on their I don't think they have a good one on their roster. Bills Patriots Redux round three. Um, it, it, the two games that we played them in this year, it was a tale of two games. The first one was in Buffalo, shitty ass weather. New England barely had Mac throw the ball at all. We did a whole lot of running, and we still pulled the win out. Then Buffalo came to New England under better weather conditions, and they managed to kick our ass. Um, which ended up being the, the decider for the division. <sighs> um, I think it's going to be a tight game, but I'm taking the Patriots on this one. I think they'll get the job done. I think Mac will get a playoff victory for us. And uh, off to the second round we go. And then the Raiders and Bengals, we get a rematch from earlier this season. Uh, this should be a good one. 
The Bengals, they're trying to get their first win in the playoffs in quite a while. Remember, there was a stretch of seasons where uh, under Marvin Lewis where they just could not get it done. And for the Raiders, they're just trying to, after everything that's happened this year, they want to keep going with their season, you know, win games for John Madden and all that stuff. I think the Bengals end the losing streak here. They will finally advance in the playoffs and will get out of the wild card round where they win over the Raiders. On the NFC side, Buccaneers are going to squash the Eagles. Um, that shouldn't be much of a contest, I feel like. Brady gets his sort of revenge against Philly um, for their Super Bowl uh, 52, I believe. Um, can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Cowboys 49ers, a rivalry reignited. Uh, except it's not going to be much of that because the Cowboys are going to destroy them because the 49ers are just... Their QBs are hurt. So, yeah. Um, and then Cardinals, Rams, Redux, round three again. Uh, this should be good. Um, both teams have played really well this year. They've fought for the division. Um, <laughs> both teams should probably, you'd want to have advance, but only one can do so. And I'm taking the Cardinals to get it done. I think what's going to cost the Rams is Matthew Stafford will have a late game interception or two. Um, and ultimately, that's what's going to cost them the game and a chance at advancing. So now we get to the divisional round. The top-seeded Titans against the sixth-seeded Patriots. The second-seeded Chiefs against the fourth-seeded Bengals. The second-seed Buccaneers against the third-seed Cowboys. And the top-seeded Packers against the fifth-seeded Cardinals. On the AFC side, give me the Titans over the Patriots. Um, Derrick Henry is back. He's going to be 100% healthy going into this game. And I I want to see New England advance. But again, this Mac Jones is a rookie. This is going to be a tough game. It's going to be in Nashville. Um, that crowd is going to be going fucking nuts. So... Give me the and so just give me the Titans for this one, um, and I can't wait to see what New England does next year. Chiefs Bengals a rematch from a couple weeks ago where the Bengals winning this game won them the division, won them the AFC North, and ended the Chiefs winning streak. Now in that game, Cincinnati got off to a slow start and had to catch up quickly, and they did. They can't do that in this game. They have to come out all so all going all right they need to learn from the browns game against the chiefs in the playoffs last year do not get off to a slow start if you do the chiefs will destroy you so with that said i'm taking the bagels to go to the afc championship game bull prediction and the reason being is look going into the playoffs right now Tyreek Hill is dinged up. Travis Kelsey is dinged up. Mahomes has had his moments where he hasn't looked like Mahomes. Um, and they have to play the wild card round. If anything, the Chiefs needed the bye week about as bad as the Titans did. Maybe worse. And they didn't get it. So, because they're going to have that extra game on them, and with some of their key guys being dinged up, and you know, COVID's still a thing, as we've seen, um, they're going to be affected. And I, this is the chance, this is the Bengals' chance to play spoiler to the Chiefs going back to the Super Bowl for another season, for like the third or fourth time in a row. Um, and also to save us from getting a Buccaneers Chiefs rematch again. Um, oh, well, for the second year in a row, I should say, in that case. But. I think the Bengals will get it done. This team is special, and if everybody's going, it's hard to stop them. Um, on the NFC side, Buccaneers, Cowboys, I cannot wait for this. If this is if we get this, I'm gonna laugh because uh, Skip Bayless is gonna be insufferable as fuck either way. Uh, give me the Buccaneers though. Um, it, it's gonna be much like the Week One opener. 
we're just gonna kick we're just gonna beat the cowboys that's all we got to do uh cardinals packers cardinals want to get revenge for the packers ending their winning streak to open uh earlier the season that's not gonna happen the cardinals have not looked like that team that's that won so many games to start the year uh, and DeAndre Hopkins is out because he got hurt late in the season. So yeah, Green Bay is advancing. So that means your NFC, your AFC and NFC championship games will be the Titans against the Bengals and the Buccaneers against the Packers. I'm going to start with the NFC side first. Buccaneers, Packers, give me the Buccaneers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, look, man. It's going to be another game where Green Bay, they're just going to choke. They're going to do it again. And Rodgers is going to end up leaving Green Bay. I'm calling it now. Um, the Buccaneers, it just feels like Destiny, that even despite their defense being not as dominant as it was last year, that they will potentially go back to the Super Bowl again. And it's only fitting. It just is. Um, on the AFC side, the Titans and the Bengals, who would have predicted this AFC championship game earlier this year? I know I wouldn't have, but I think that's what we're going to get. Again, if the Bengals can get past the Chiefs, assuming that that's the matchup we get, then, uh, yeah, that's going to be wild. Because again, because the key thing to remember here is that, um, if the Bills beat the Patriots, then with all top four seeds advancing, we would be getting the Titans and the Bengals and the Chiefs and the Bills in the divisional round. So the Patriots beating the Bills is the key factor here to getting a Bengals win over the Chiefs and then have the Bengals go to the AFC Championship game in this case, rather than have to face the Titans in the divisional round. Either way, this game is going to be a banger. Um, you know, Derrick Henry going up against the Burrow Chase connection um and i think derrick henry and the, the titans are going to be the ones to come out on top um it's going to be a crazy it's gonna be a crazy game if we get it and um tennessee is going to get the job done i really think this is even with derrick henry having been out for so much of the season the fact that they were playing so well beforehand and that they managed to hold on and play just as well without him for the most part uh, the rest of the season, getting him back is going to bode well for them. And it's going to help the Titans, you know, go to the Super Bowl. So it's going to be Tennessee against Tampa Bay, Super Bowl 56. And I'm not picking the Buccaneers to win this time. I'm taking the Titans to get the job done. <sighs> I want to pick Tampa, but the defense. If they if they can get it, the defense figured out, good. But this is Derrick Henry we're talking about, and when he's healthy, he runs the fuck over you. Bottom line, you know. And if AJ Brown's healthy, if Julio Jones is healthy, if that team is healthy, the Titans they have just as good of a chance as anybody to potentially win a big game like this. And to knock off Tom Brady, it's going to take a lot. I think it can happen, and I think they'll get it done. So give me the Tennessee Titans defeating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win Super Bowl 56. And what will be the end to one of the craziest seasons we've seen in a long time? Thank you all for watching. I hope you all made it to the end of the video. If you did, let me know down below. Um, let me know your predictions down below and I will catch you all next time. Peace.